<laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we are at one of my favorite spots for off-roading because it is full of ruts and deep holes, deep uphill sections. It is the perfect spot to have some fun in an off-roader. The reason we are here is because I wanted to show you how a permanent four-wheel drive system works and the basics of that system. These permanent four-wheel drive systems can mostly be found on old Land Rovers or on most uh, full-time 4x4 Toyotas like the new Prado, the new 300 series Land Cruiser, the 4Runner Limited which is a full-time 4x4 and of course older Land Cruisers like the 80 series and the 100 series. They all pretty much work in the same way. So let's get started. In order to understand how a full-time 4x4 system works, we first need to go over differentials. When a car takes a turn, the inside wheels cover a shorter distance than the outside ones. This instance and many others mean that wheels need to be able to spin at different speeds. This is done with the help of differentials. To get the basics of a four-wheel drive system down, of a full-time four-wheel drive system down, all you need to know is that open diffs will always send power to the wheel that has the least amount of grip. This is all you need to know. No need to understand how differentials work. If this isn't something that interests you, differentials can, see, can seem a bit complicated. All you need to know is that an open differential allows the inside and outside wheels to turn at different speeds. And when the vehicle is in a difficult off-road situation, because of their inherent design, in order to allow that differentiation in speed, open differentials inherently send power to the wheel with the least resistance. Now, the center differential in a Land Rover works in exactly the same way. It is a differential, but instead of sending power to each wheel on each axle, it is in the center of the vehicle and it splits the power between the front and rear axles. So when you have the center differential open, the transfer box will send power to the axle that has the least amount of grip. Now, if that axle has a wheel in the air, which tends to be the case, then the individual axle will also send the power to the wheel with the least grip. So you will essentially only have one wheel spinning and that wheel is going to be the wheel that is in the air. At that instance, you lock the differential, the center differential, and send power to the opposite wheel in the rear. This little section right here is the perfect situation to demonstrate this. I have just unlocked the center differential, which now enables the front and rear axles to spin at different uh, speeds enabling the car to take turns. If you have the center differential locked, you will bind up the drivetrain because you aren't allowing the axles to, speed, to spin at different speeds. Now, as soon as I hit the rut, the suspension will articulate, which will lead to a loss of traction on the wheels that aren't in contact with the ground well enough. This is the perfect situation right here. As you can see, I'm trying to go back and the only wheel that is spinning is the rear right wheel. It is receiving all the power because the center differential is open. Therefore, it splits the power between the two axles. The axle with the less grip gets the power. In this case, it is the rear axle. And then the rear axle, because it is also an open differential, splits the power again between the two rear wheels and as mentioned before the power goes to the wheel with the least grip which in this case is the rear right and as you can see it is just spinning doing nothing now if i lock the diff the center differential it should get us out of here it should enable us to drive backwards because the locked center differential 
We'll also send power to the front axle. Now, because the front axle is also an open differential, it will also split the power between the two wheels with the power going to the wheel with the least resistance. But at least we have two wheels spinning now instead of one. The center differential doesn't make the job completely effortless because again, you have the power loss from the two front and rear axles to make the vehicle an actual permanent four wheel drive without any losses, you need a front, center and rear locker. This divides power by four and each wheel gets the same amount of power. Sadly, the Discovery doesn't have diff lockers, so I can't demonstrate this. The Land Cruiser does have a rear diff locker, however, uh, it is broken, so I couldn't use it for this demonstration. But as you can see now, with the center differential lock, and the articulation of the Land Rover suspension, I can get through this crossed up section relatively easily. I'm gonna go through it one more time just for a recap. On the road, on flat surfaces like I am uh, on right now, you want to unlock the center differential to enable the front and rear axles to spin at different speeds. If you don't do that, you might break something or you're just putting more stress on components which is unnecessary. You will also wear out your tires if you are on a grippy surface. Now, as soon as I am back in the ruts, right here, I lock the center differential straight away. And I try to follow the line which will lead to the least amount of getting uh, crossed up. This is quite a deep rut, like a normal vehicle without much flex would be lifting wheels all over the place here. However, uh, the suspension travel of the Land Rover makes this look easy. Now, in this section right here, as you can see, wheels will start losing traction because the suspension is flexed up, which means that in this specific situation right now, the wheels with the most grip are this one, which is firmly in contact with the ground with the steep section of the right right here and the exact opposite wheel in the rear of the car. So these are the wheels with the most grip. However, they won't get the power because of open differentials. The power will go to the left front and to the right rear. So it kind of works in an X pattern. I know this sounds inefficient, but it is the only way differentials can work. To get more performance out of this car, you need differential lockers. And with the center diff locked, we drive through this without any issues. Of course, if the rut was much deeper and wheels weren't in contact with the ground, then I would have a problem and I wouldn't be able to drive through this without axle lockers. Lockers on the front or rear axle, or better yet, both front and rear lockers. Before closing this video, it is worth mentioning that two-wheel drive trucks once they have been shifted to four-wheel drive work in the same way as a permanent 4x4 with its center diff locked. The open differential principle on each axle remains the same. There is no center differential in this vehicle, therefore once shifted to four-wheel drive such trucks will split power equally between the two axles regardless of the situation. This is why you don't drive in four-wheel drive on the road or any other grippy surface. So yeah, that's about it. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one.